Hey everyone, welcome back to Control System Lectures. This is the third video on discrete control. If you haven't seen the first two, check out the links in the description below. In this video, I want to clear up a confusion that I caused last time regarding the zero order hold method to discretize a continuous controller. And in doing so, we'll expand our knowledge on hold logic in general. So let's get to it. If you recall from the last video, the idea with a zero order hold is that we use it to go from a discrete signal where you only get information at the sample times to a continuous system where you have information continuously at all times. A hold is a type of digital to analog converter and it's the way that we fill in all of that missing information between the discrete samples. With a zero order hold, we keep the last sample value constant or with zero slope until the next sample. This makes the continuous representation a series of step inputs, both stepping up and stepping down. The example I gave before was a motor driver, and we'll use that again to illustrate the point of the hold logic. The motor driver is supplied with a sequence of discrete voltages which are calculated by a digital computer. And then the digital to analog converter, which is a physical piece of electrical hardware, holds the voltage constant between commands, and then steps up or down to the new voltage at the next sample time. The motor, which is a continuous system, is spinning and reacting to the voltage that is output from the DAC. If this is a closed loop system and we're designing a servo motor, then the motor speed or position is sensed by a continuous sensor, like a Hall effect sensor that varies a voltage based on motor position. The output voltage is sampled, or picked off occasionally, and fed back into our digital computer that's running our controller. The basic question we're trying to answer with all of these videos is how do we design an appropriate controller that's going to run on the digital computer? Let's rewrite the flow diagram from the last video showing the two ways to do this. Both of these methods require that you take a continuous system and turn it into a discrete system. We then covered two ways to perform that discretization and I proceeded to explain how awesome and realistic the zero order hold method was. Now you might have the opinion that we could, and should, use the zero order hold method for both of these discretization steps. And you probably have that idea because of me and what I said in the last video. I unfortunately said that you could use the zero order hold method in both of these cases. That is, use it to discretize your controller or your plant. That statement is technically true. You can use any discretization method you want to get a discrete transfer function. However, it's misleading to imply that we'll use the zero order hold method to get the discrete controller transfer function that we want. So why is that? Why don't we just take the zero order hold method and run with it for every continuous system that needs to be discretized? Well, let's refer back to the block diagram. The key here is understanding where the hold logic exists so that we can account for it properly in our design. Now in the real world, that hold is performed by the physical implementation of the digital to analog converter, or the motor driver in this case. So if you have a physical setup of your system, and you're designing and tuning your controller on that hardware, then you're already accounting for the hold logic since it's just part of the system. However, we're not doing that in these videos. What I'm showing you is model-based design. That is, we're designing our controller using a model or simulation of the system, not the real physical thing. And because of that, it's critical that we model it accurately. Otherwise, when we take the controller we designed using the model and put it on the physical hardware, it's not going to perform like we want, and it may be possibly unstable and damage the hardware. So let's assume that we want to take the path where we design our discrete controller using discrete domain control techniques and using a model that is completely represented in the Z domain. In this case, our end goal is a discrete representation of everything that the controller has to interact with. That means that we need to convert the continuous plant, the continuous sensor model, the hold logic, and the sampler into a discrete transfer function that mimics the behavior of the real continuous system. If we don't include the effects of the zero order hold when doing this discretization, then our model isn't going to reflect the real physical hardware and when we design our controller, it won't account for the delay that the zero order hold imparts on the system. Therefore, if you're discretizing the plant, then the zero order hold method is a practical choice. But now let's look at the path where we first design a continuous controller with a completely continuous model. We design that controller using continuous domain control techniques like the root locus or Bode plots, and we get to a solution that we think will meet our needs. 
At this point, we have to convert the continuous controller, C of S, into a discrete controller, C of Z, so that it'll run on the digital computer. Now, it doesn't make sense to include the zero order hold as part of this conversion. If you convert the controller with the zero order hold method, you are basically including the effects of the hold twice. Basically, you're saying that there is a zero order hold here before the digital controller, which is not the case. Therefore, if you're designing a continuous controller and then discretizing it, some other discretization method is probably preferred. Something that just converts the controller itself and doesn't include any hold logic with it. We could use the impulse method like we discussed last time, but more popular methods include the Tustin method and the matched pole zero method. Now I'll cover those in the next video so I can make it a bit more focused on them specifically. But before I end this video, I want to touch on a few more things just to get you thinking about them in the meantime. First off, if you're building a hybrid model or a mixed domain model in Simulink, there's an implied zero order hold between the discrete and continuous systems. I've set up two hybrid models in Simulink. The top one does not have an explicit zero order hold between the two domains. I just left it off. Whereas the bottom one does have an explicit zero order hold. I've set the sample time for the two discrete systems and the zero order hold to be the same. And I've excited both systems with a step input and plotted the two responses on the same axis. Now it's hard to tell that these are actually identical because they are sitting right on top of each other. So I'll just separate them onto different plots so that you can see that they are in fact the same. It's important to note that Simulink adds this zero order hold for you because if you're using the hybrid model to tune your discrete controller, then the zero order hold is already accounted for. That is, if you're just tweaking this discrete transfer function in the Simulink environment until you get a system that you're happy with, the zero order hold is there. Here I'll just change the gain of my controller from a 1 to 0.7 to decrease the overshoot. With Simulink, we can make these types of changes and see how it affects our hybrid model. And I could keep tweaking this controller until I'm happy with it, but right now I'd like to show you something else that you should know when using Simulink to design your control system. If we replace the discrete transfer function with a continuous transfer function, then the entire model, of course, is continuous, and the zero order hold goes away. You don't need a zero order hold with a continuous system. Therefore, if you design a continuous controller with this model, it won't take into account the delay from the hold, and when you discretize it, it will be less stable than you intended because of that. The plant and controller that I've modeled here are the exact ones that we used in the first video in this series. And if I plot the closed loop response to a step input, you can see on the left that there is about a 20% overshoot and a settle time of around two seconds. And this was our original design criteria. But let me show you what happens if we discretize the controller using the Tustin method. I'll go back to MATLAB and create our controller transfer function and use the function C2D with the Tustin method and a sample time of 0.2 seconds. Now I can transfer the controller coefficients over to a discrete transfer function block in Simulink and simulate the response to a step input. Basically, we're putting a controller designed for a system without a zero order hold into a hybrid system with a zero order hold. And the yellow line is our continuous controller response from before. And the blue line is the discrete controller response. As you can see, our overshoot jumped to over 50% and the settle time is now around three or four seconds. We have this extra delay in our system with the zero order hold, but we didn't take that into consideration when designing our continuous controller. So we need to account for the hold somehow. Let me just duplicate our continuous model and stick a zero order hold in the model to see how it affects the continuous system. I'll rerun the response to the step input and you can see the result of this new model in red. By adding the zero order hold, our total system behavior is much closer to the real hybrid system that we want. Therefore, we need to figure out how to include the effects of the hold like this when designing the continuous controller so that once we discretize it, it will have better performance, or at least the performance that we expect it to have. The problem is, you can't use classical control techniques with a zero order hold because that function is nonlinear. But, a way around that problem is to just approximate the zero order hold effects with an S domain transfer function. Once we do that, then we can use classical control techniques to design the appropriate controller. And you can get that transfer function 
with a Pade approximation of the hold. This is an expansion of the delay term e to the minus st, and then applied to the s and t domain representations of the zero order hold. In our case, with a sample time of 0.2 seconds, the Pade approximation for the zero order hold is 10 over s plus 10. And I'll explain Pade approximations in more detail in the future, but for now, let me just show you the end result for a first order Pade approximation of the zero order hold. The new response to the step input is in green, and while it's not perfect, we can see that both the Pade approximation and the included zero order hold models match fairly well with the hybrid system. At least, both methods are much closer to the hybrid model than just ignoring the effects of the hold altogether. But the model with the Pade approximation has the added benefit of being a completely continuous system, which means we can design our controller using classical S-domain control techniques, and then discretize that controller using something like the Tustin method. So let's summarize the approaches that we can take to design a discrete controller. If we want to design a discrete controller directly using classical z-domain control techniques, we can discretize the plant with a method that includes the zero-order hold. In this way, we have the entire model in the z-domain and we can design our discrete controller directly using that. If we want to design a continuous controller first using classical s-domain control techniques, we can mimic the zero-order hold with a Pade approximation s-domain transfer function, then design our controller, and finally discretize it with a method that doesn't include the zero order hold, like the Tustin method. Lastly, if we want to design our controller using a hybrid model, then there's no discretization needed. We can design and tune a discrete controller with a continuous plant directly in Simulink. The downside to this method, however, is that we can't rely on our classical control toolbox. We have to use different techniques, which we will cover in a future video. Now this is where I'm going to end this video. I hope it's cleared up some confusion about when to discretize with the zero order hold method and how to account for the hold effects in your controller design. In the next video, I'll cover the Tustin and matched discretization methods and walk through a couple of examples of discrete controller design. If you have any questions or comments on this video, please leave them below and I will try to answer them if I can. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any future videos and thanks for watching. And a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters for making this video possible. If you'd like to support me and my efforts on YouTube, you can from the Patreon link in the description below. For any amount of support, you can download a digital copy of my book, In Progress on Control Theory. Now, I'm still actively writing the book, so it's not complete, but if you would like a copy of what I have so far, and you don't want to support me through Patreon, just email me at controlsystemlectures at gmail.com, and I'll just send you a copy for free. That way we can spread the knowledge and help everyone on their quest to becoming better control system engineers. Thanks everyone.